In Jeff Nichols' Loving, the philosophy of visual simplicity keeps us focused on the human face and the small movements of the actor's expressions. The deliberately minimalist, stripped-down visual world feels subtle and unassuming, just like Mildred and Richard Loving, the quiet couple at the center of the 1967 Supreme Court case Loving v. Virginia, which struck down state laws against interracial marriage. The choice to step back and let the actions play out without interference isn't a lazy camera technique, it's a philosophy of filmmaking. History jumps out of the textbook, giving us something human to connect to, the universal story of two people in love, in a world that's hostile to that love. Tell the judge I love my wife. Loving cinematographer Adam Stone uses stately, no distractions, person-centered camera work and lighting. According to film professor Julian Cornell, Jeff Nichols to me is one of the most interesting directors working today. One of the most interesting things about Nichols for a contemporary director is how little he moves the camera. There's a reliance today amongst directors in moving camera because you can do it, it's feasible, and he resists that. Now why does he do that? I think a number of reasons he does that is it allows for more intimate character portraits. So we're not caught up in thinking about what the camera's doing. We feel we're just watching two people, unmediated. I, I always use the word more. The camera's always kind of locked. Whose POV is that? Like, if it's not a person's POV in the movie, we don't want the camera to be way out there filming something it shouldn't. And you're not getting what the actor's saying or not saying. Compensating for their lack of camera movement, they create depth and dynamism through blocking and composition. You know, and they're always stack three shot if we have three people. You know, it's almost like a wedge or a triangle. You have someone in the foreground, someone in the middle, <laughs> someone in the background. When the camera does make unsettling movements, they align with the outer world and moments when hostile forces crash in from outside. In here! Richard! What you doing in bed with that woman? I'm his wife. That's no good here. We always say, like, keep it simple, stupid. I love when people say, you know, it's simple and authentic. Loving's production designer, Chad Keith, chooses locations and set dressings that eliminate everything in essential. So what we see in frame is only the honest environment the Lovings would interact with. I think it's just important that, that, to not have the distraction. You don't have to always have something in every frame. If it doesn't need to be there, then, you know, why is it there? I like to give a complete set, you know, even if we're not seeing the whole set at all times. So it just helps the overall feel. It helps the characters get more into the moment because they can look across the room and see that, you know, the rest of their house is actually there. If we look closer at a few key scenes, we notice how visual choices like the set dressing and framing are also reinforcing important moments and themes of the story in sophisticated ways. For example, the framing in the jail scene. When the police won't let Richard bail a very pregnant Mildred out of jail, every shot contains layer upon layer of prison bars. It's a striking visual echo and illustration of the overwhelming number of layers of institutional forces keeping them apart and just how long a journey of appeal after appeal they'll have to go through to remove these layers of violent separation. We asked the cinematographer and the production designer to tell us about a couple of their favorite scenes in the movie. Stone points to the dishwashing scene as an example of how visual simplicity can move us. He points out that he went for a very basic lighting here. Gray was here, Mildred was here. Um, I would be, if I was camera, we'd be looking this way and they're in profile. And then super simple batten strip of tungsten light bulbs up in the ceiling. Um, and just with a, a piece of muslin in the back to kill some of the shadows, and that's what lit it. We may lose the small battles, but win the big war. And the other thing that I kind of love about that scene is that film just wasn't sitting correctly. Um, as it passed the, the, film, the, the gate. Basically, a, a camera is just a, a sewing machine that runs film through it. But it's one of those neat things with, with film, like you never know what you're gonna get. It's kind of this amazingly fragile, yet beautiful medium to shoot with. It's beautifully flawed, I guess, like that scene. One specific scene in the film that I like is when Mildred is sitting on the couch watching the march with Martin Luther King Jr. and she's sitting in her living room and she's basically a few blocks away from it where it's happening. That scene is just really brings it home to how just sort of, of quiet people they were. 
In some key moments, Nichols chooses to cut out from closer views of the loving's emotions to a wide shot. In these wide shots, we grasp the big picture of how this couple shaped history. Wider shots of the land in Virginia also connect us with the loving's feelings about this place. I'm gonna build you a house. Our house. Each place in the film earns a strong emotional presence. When Richard and Mildred are forced to leave rural Virginia for inner city DC, the green open space of the countryside is replaced by the claustrophobic, desaturated feel of a city they have no connection to. We were in these really lush environments, pumped up the greens just a tad, um, and then a little bit of desat in DC to kind of counterpoint. The production also achieved its realism and authentic performances by shooting in actual places the Lovings inhabited. We're walking literally in the footsteps of these people. We're, we're outside the jail where she was held and inside the courtroom where she was tried. The courtroom that they were tried in was original. I think at that point the clerk of court even told me the same tables and chairs were in there from when they were tried, which was pretty amazing. The exterior of the jail was still standing. Using the documentary The Loving Story by Nancy Bwierski as a guide, the Loving team based many visuals on 16 millimeter footage of the couple, made the small battles and win the big war, and photos by Life magazine photographer Gray Vallette, who's also a character in the film played by Michael Shannon. I was just kind of mesmerized how he captured such truthful, simple images. He never used a flash. He never bounced light. He'd always find natural light. He never forced a shot. He never manicured anything. Um, his saying was like, I wanted to capture images that are as, as real as real could get. And that resonated with me. And I was like, hmm, that kind of is kind of our mantra or canon. The quiet, elegant nature of the Lovings is mirrored in Nichols' anti-spectacle style. We're not so much focused on the experience of watching the film in the sense of getting entertainment or having visual pleasure. His films are anti-spectacle. Where another a director might emphasize action or drama, he de-emphasizes it. I think history is much like things today in terms of headlines. Um, we look for, for things that blow up. Those are where our eyes tend to fall on the train wrecks in this story. It was, it was a psychological violence. It was quiet violence, but the real insidious part of uh, their persecution was the time that was taken away from them. We don't look at those types of stories. For the audience, watching the slow burn of the story unfolding may take a little patience, but the payoff is the unexpected swelling of emotion that we didn't notice has been gradually building in us all along. By the end, we feel the film has visually captured what loving looks like.